crossing dimensions of time and space. Technology beyond comprehension. They are watching. They are waiting. They are already here. The official explanation was that nothing had come down to the ground. We've eliminated everything. Kecksburg, Pennsylvania, 1965. In a decade marked by conflict and unrest, this tiny hamlet in the hills southeast of Pittsburgh remains untouched by the troubles of the outside world. Until the evening of December 9th. For local resident Stan Gordon, this night marks the beginning of a lifelong journey. I remember that evening quite well. I was 16 years old. I was actually tuned into KDK Radio in Pittsburgh. There was a great radio show that was quite educational, and I used to listen almost every night. If you're just tuning in, folks, there's a major story breaking about a strange light streaking across the sky. The reports initially came in with a bright fireball being seen from the tip of Ontario over Michigan, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. From the calls we're getting, it appears the object is tracking southeasterly over the state towards Westmoreland County. So keep your eyes to the skies, folks. On the edge of town, 40-year-old truck driver Bill Bulabosch tinkers with his prized possession. I was under the wood and, uh, and I could hear this sizzling noise and I looked at the car. There, were, there ain't nothing in the car. up and I seen this streak of fire and I said oh what's this and it was up about a mile and a half two miles I watched it and it went towards the mountain and then it went up there so far and it turned around and come back again and it seemed like it couldn't make up its mind of where it was going to land you know and then, and then it made it turn and went right into the woods KDK was breaking in with live reports that an unidentified flying object had reportedly fallen near the village of Kecksburg. The latest on the bright light situation, local police have been dispatched to the scene as calls continue to flood the phone lines here at KDKA. We'll have more for you right after a word from our sponsors. And I remember that night I was running back and forth between the TV and the radio trying to listen to the latest reports from the different sources to find out what was going on. Exactly. There was some thought that maybe this had been an airplane that may have exploded in the sky out towards Greensburg, towards Westmoreland County. As you can see, the curious have gathered here on Coons Lane near Kecksburg. They, like us, are hoping to find out what exactly has landed in these woods. I got in my car and I went up the road. You, you couldn't get near the place for automobiles on that, that back road. Get up there and I says, oh my God, where's all these people coming from? Cruising the Kecksburg Hills in his new car, William Weaver tunes into the local radio station. I was 19 years old at the time and I heard on the radio that something had landed there and as I come down the hill I seen some people standing off on the side of the road and I stopped and asked them. and everybody was wondering you know what is this what happened is it an airplane you know they had no idea looking down over the hill as it was getting dark I could see that there was a blue light coming off of this that would go very dull and then get very bright and then go back to getting very dull again but it was very visible. And I could see lights down there. You know, down in the woods, looked like sparklers, like some kind of haze coming from it. 
So far, authorities at airports from Pittsburgh to Philadelphia are not... Repeat, not reporting any missing aircraft. Whatever has crashed into these woods appears to have been flying without a flight plan. More and more calls were coming into the radio station. That's only true. We can tell you that there's a lot of military action going on around here. We have seen numerous military trucks driving toward the site of the alleged... Seemed very intriguing. As you can see, Why would the military be coming in unless they felt that there was some reason to come out there that night? Here was the army. They they were all there and their guns and everything. And they kept well, everybody up there, there on the road. All we we're able to observe, uh, apart from the uh, ongoing military activity, is a strange blue glow emanating from the site. I don't think anybody in that area had ever seen that many soldiers in Kecksburg. There was no bluff involved in what they were making the people do. He told me to back my car out of there and get out of there right away. It's either you move it or I'm going to confiscate your car. The military has blocked off all incoming roads. Soldiers and state police are not allowing anyone near these woods. Some people have gone on record and said that soldiers actually aimed their weapons at civilians to prevent them from going down into the area. Why would so many military personnel be sent to a small farming community with armed soldiers aiming weapons at certain civilians trying to get down to the site? Where did that jurisdiction come from? And what was so important down in the woods that they didn't want the public to see? The next day, I was eagerly awaiting the newspapers, and I was trying to get a hold of all the local editions. The morning paper had the heading, Army Ropes Off Area, Unidentified Flying Object Falls Near Kecksburg. The search, they claim, continued to about 2 a.m. However, the later edition had the heading, Searches Fell to Find Object. It was being stated that people had been mistaken. Nothing had fallen. They had seen just a bright meteor in the sky. The Air Force made a statement that this was a meteor. In other words, that nothing came down that night. They said that a three-man team went out to investigate something that started a fire and searched the area and came back at 2 a.m. and found nothing. I seen it. It made it turn and went right into the woods. I could see that there was a blue light coming off of it. And this went on the whole time that I was there. The only official Air Force document that was ever located on the Kecksburg incident suggests that there was only three Air Force personnel involved. Yet multitudes of eyewitnesses, including reporters, verify the fact that there was a fairly good military presence, various types of military equipment and personnel, and trucks were observed in different areas around the village that evening. The Air Force statement completely contradicts what the witnesses have said and what the media reported the night of the event. I hesitate to just accuse a government agency of a cover-up just sort of outright, but I do think it's a possibility. What's the military keeping from the people of Kecksburg? John. What? There's something at the window. And who else is involved in the possible cover-up? On December 9, 1965, after reports that a fiery object crashed into the woods, the tiny community of Kecksburg, Pennsylvania, is overrun by military personnel. All civilians, fall back. Repeat, fall back. The military has blocked off all incoming roads. There has been no reason given for this latest initiative. The following day, Newspapers report that nothing was found. The official explanation was it was just a meteor, that nothing had come down to the ground. But the official story doesn't match up with what John Hayes saw across town. So now information, the military presence in Westmoreland County continues to grow in response to reports of this fiery object falling to earth in the woods. 
Again, here at KDKA, we want to... I was 10 years old, and I lived in a little farmhouse in Kecksburg. We listened to the radio the whole time it was going on. That convoy of military vehicles has been spotted heading to the east side of the Kecksburg Valley. Stay tuned to KDKA for more of our reports from this... That's right here behind our house. Well, there was uh, fields and then the woods. My bedroom window faced everything. You know, I, I had a good viewpoint. I could see people coming in the driveway and cars being parked. I could see flashlights, but you couldn't tell who they were or what kind of vehicle it was. My dad went out to find out what was going on. Stay here and be quiet. We're supposed to be asleep. When my dad came back in, he wasn't alone. There was military people with him. My house was converted into military base for a little bit. John, what? There's something at the window. Okay. I seen these guys. They was in like moon suits or whatever the heck you want to call. Them. Who are those guys? When they was talking to each other. I seen a NASA patch on the one's arm. I thought, you know, that was that was pretty crazy. NASA's job during that time period was to deal with anything that fell from space, any debris or anything unexplained. NASA would go to the scene and retrieve the thing that fell. If the statement released by the Air Force is true, and nothing was found at the crash site in the woods. What is NASA doing in Kecksburg? They had a box with them, a big box. It's probably about four foot wide and about eight foot long. Then it walked down through the field and down to the corner of the woods where everything was going on. Louise, can I just look for one second? Stop pestering me. When I was looking out my bedroom window, I was watching the cars and stuff like up on the, on the driveway, and just sort of watching what was going on out there. Uh, this jeep come down through and then truck come down through. And it was just a big flatbed truck, you know, it was empty. It was probably down there for a half hour to maybe 45 minutes at that. And they came back out with something on the back of the truck. So what's going on? It was dark. You know, I could just, you know, I could tell by shapes, you know. It's probably about the size of a Volkswagen, you know, from where I was at. But when it went down, it didn't have nothing on it. When it come back out of there, it had something on it. Because of all the witness reports, the newspaper reports, the radio coverage, we know that something came down that night and was taken away on a truck. I believe that there are people that have either direct information on this case or have knowledge of the event. And I believe that it's very possible that there is physical evidence out there. Could that fireball have been something other than a meteor? Did a meteorite land in the Kecksburg woods? Meteorites are meteors that hit the Earth. They're rocks from space that we actually recover on the surface of the Earth. Most meteorites come from the asteroid belt. We also have some meteorites that come from the planet Mars. They're blasted off of Mars by impacts, rocks go into space, and just like the bugs on the windshield, when you drive down the highway, those rocks also hit the Earth and some of them survive and are recovered as meteorites. We also have meteorites from the moon, same story. Meteorites are coming to Earth all the time in the form of space dust. We estimate about 100,000 tons per year of 
fine-grained material. Rocks the size of my hands, the size of a basketball, the size of a car are much rarer. They brought these special boxes in, they took it down toward the impact area, so the question is, what were they going to put on those boxes? In the mid-60s, there was a heightened awareness of the potential that meteorites could carry alien life forms. In these rocks, there are fractures, there are cracks, there are crevices, and the possibility exists that microbial life, as we know it, could live inside a rock and be transported to another planet and survive that journey. As a result, partly of this kind of sensitivity, the rocks from the moon brought back by the Apollo astronauts were actually quarantined for a period of time. This is called planetary protection. A falling meteorite can't account for the object's varying speed or erratic trajectory. Those local people who saw the object descend said it did not come down at a high rate of speed but it came down relatively slowly. The cosmic velocity, the, the orbital velocity around the sun that an object has, that it brings with it when it enters the Earth's atmosphere, is huge, between 36 and 72,000 kilometers per hour. You need a large force to veer it off course, and we've never observed that in a meteorite. People say it about a meteorite. Meteorite goes straight up and down, you know, it don't turn. It seemed like it was radio controlled or somebody was controlling it to do that. If the object wasn't a meteorite, what did the military haul out of the Kecksburg woods? Now, I don't think there it was a meteorite because I don't think there would have been as much secrecy over a meteorite. When I woke up the next morning, the military, they was gone. Me and my brother, we went over to investigate. What is that? He looked at us and he said, you need to get out of the woods because there might be radiation. After a fiery object crashes in the Kecksburg woods, the Air Force claims witnesses saw a meteor flying across the skies and report nothing was found in the area. I was wondering, like, well, why would the military be coming out there unless something important had happened? That same evening, across town, a large covered object is secretly removed from the woods. I couldn't swear on my life what it was. I just know that they took something out of there. The next morning, John Hayes and his brother make their way down to the crash site. We'd seen something on the other side, and we just couldn't figure out what the heck it was, so we went over to investigate. We walked down through the woods, because everybody's pretty much cleared out by then. Do you think them people are still here? You don't hear no trucks or nothing. If you look out through the top of the trees, the trees were all broke off. Well, it was a big burn area. The woods was burnt all off right there, and we're walking through there, and it was probably a good four or 500 feet. The evidence suggested that there was a pattern of tree damage down there. It was not a situation where the whole forest was damaged by some kind of ice storm or something. There were isolated trees that were kind of in a trajectory that made sense for an object that was coming down and fit the descriptions of what the witnesses had said. What is that? It's dirt. There was a clearing right there that it was all fresh dirt and it wasn't the same kind of dirt you know because wood dirt's darker this here was a, a lighter color this could not have been a meteorite because a meteorite leaves a huge crater big hole in the ground 
It wasn't something that came crashing down from the sky. It really confirms what witnesses said, that something coming down gradually and only hitting certain trees and not others, not making a huge hole in the ground. It buried something here, didn't they? No. It took something out of here, and they filled the hole it left with this dirt. I think what it was is they just wanted to cover up whatever kind of evidence to show that there was anything taken out of it. Hmm. What the hell are you boys doing here? We live in a farm. Over there. Well, you better get on home. This winter's full of radiation. Yeah, we live here. You know, we're down here all the time, you know. He said, well, you need to get out of the woods because there's a chance, you know, that there, there might be radiation. Where could the radiation come from? In the 50s and the 60s, there was work on developing nuclear rockets and nuclear-based propulsion system for aircraft. And those propulsion systems uh, released a lot, of, a lot of radiation into the open atmosphere. Whether that ever got employed beyond a research activity, I kind of doubt it. Now, there could be something with the payload that the, the vehicle carries uh, that resulted in radiation being left over in some area. Conceivably, if you were carrying a nuclear weapon, uh, if that weapon had been damaged, you know, that could have some radiation that, that would hang around for a while and be measurable. But that's not a common thing that somebody might encounter. A serious radiation threat helps to explain the secrecy surrounding the operation. Project Moondust was an Air Force intelligence operation scattered around the country during the time of the Kecksburg event in December of 1965 was retrieval teams, very secretive, that would go out and collect space debris and anything that was unidentified that fell from the sky. And they were much more secretive than NASA was. We don't know if there were any moon dust officers there or not, but it's possible there were. I think what happened is maybe a piece broke off, whatever they hauled out of there, and they was just down there looking to make sure that there wasn't hmm. nothing else there. That, Somebody could say, well, here's proof, you know, that you took something, you know. And I think that's what it was all about. In the days that follow, news about the sighting quickly fades. The reporters apparently took at face value when the government came out and said that people had seen just a bright meteor, and that was accepted by their editors, and they went on to the next story. But local witnesses stand by what they saw. There was a, a small group of local people who believed that uh, they were certain nothing happened that night, that nothing was going on, that there was no military there. It got to the point where there was name calling and people were accused of making up their stories. People that was friends for years, even families that are broke up over it. When we talked about it, there was people who called us liars, that this thing never happened. And we got the sense, well, we'll just quit talking about it until Bill Bulabosh steps forward to challenge the Air Force statement. You hear these people saying nothing happened. A lot of people don't know what I know. There was a, a bell. I didn't know if it was going to blow up or somebody was going to come out of it or what. A series of unexplained events surrounding a mysterious crash in the woods near Kecksburg, Pennsylvania, shines a spotlight on the small rural community. The sheer number of witnesses to this event in Kecksburg was, was phenomenal. There were many people that saw it at different stages. Some saw it in the air, some saw it being carried off by the army trucks. But official sources deny military and NASA presence and maintain nothing landed in the area even though teams of men in anti-radiation suits are seen combing the woods. The government never come out and said this ever happened. They didn't want to publicize. They were trying to kill the whole subject. I think the confusion was the fact that nobody really knew for sure what people had seen. So resident Bill Bulabosh speaks out to set the record straight. You hear these people saying nothing happened. I know about it. I, I was there and I, I seen it. I 
after it disappeared, I figured, well, I'm going up there to see what it was. Before he joined onlookers on Coombs Lane, Bill followed the object into the woods. It was getting dark, so I grabbed a flashlight and went down in the ravine, knocked all the top of the trees out, you could see that. And I, I seen this down in the woods there, and it was like steaming. It's, it smelled just, just like rotten eggs. It was sulfur. And it was down in there about, oh, I'll say two feet deep, at least two feet. And where it, it just, just glided right in. I say it was about as big as a Volkswagen, and uh, it was a little bit longer. It was burnt clear from the nose, clear to the back. There was no seams, there was no rivets, no nothing. And then it had a, a, a thing around the back like a ring, and there was uh, graphic writing on it. And it, it just looked like if it was welded in there or what. It wasn't, you know, just marked with a pencil. I didn't know if it was going to blow up or somebody was going to come out of it or what. I could hear these voices way back in the background, and uh, I figured I better get out of there. They, like us, are hoping to find out what exactly has landed in these woods. By the time Bill joins the crowd overlooking the crash site, speculation about the object is running rampant. I just listened to everything that was going on, and all these people, uh, they were there. This one guy said there was two green men uh, coming out of it. You know, they, they're guessing. No, I kept it to myself. I know what I've seen, and he ain't gonna change it. fact is that here was something that was on the ground, it was a physical object, and apparently the military came in that night and recovered the object. So now we have to question what was really going on here, what was the object, and why hadn't the government come forth to tell the public what really happened that night? One of the first theories was that this could be Cosmos 96. The U.S. Space Command and the Russian space agencies have told us that a Russian satellite called Cosmos 96 came down the same morning as the Kecksburg event. Cosmos 96 was a probe that the Russians had created that they were sending to Venus. It was about 9 feet by 15 feet. And since it was from Russia, it had this Cyrillic type writing on it. So uh, there are points of Cosmos 96 that, you know, are valid and could actually match up to this. Two, one. Back in the 1960s, you had the whole space race, you had the Cold War going on at this time, and it was very important that we can get our hands on Russian technology and they can do the same with our technology. The Cosmos 96 had whatever the most advanced Soviet technology was at that time. And what was important as far as getting our hands on it, if we could, was you could figure out how big a missile Russia could create. I can understand the government not want other countries to get access to whatever technology they felt they could recover from this amazing thing that had just come down. The military shows up within hours, and they come in with a flatbed to take something out. They would not do that if it was a meteor. They would do that if it was a secret Air Force or Soviet object that crash landed in Kecksburg. There's been, was speculation that it was related to that event, but in more recent years, more data has surfaced, which seems to eliminate that possibility. The U.S. Space Command indicated that Cosmos 96 had re-entered the Earth's atmosphere over Canada at 318 in the morning. Russian satellite came down about 14, 15 hours before the object came down in Kecksburg, Pennsylvania. This event happened around 4.47 in the afternoon. So we know that 
Cosmos 96 did not come down in Pennsylvania all those hours later. If it wasn't Cosmos 96, what landed in the woods that night? Bill described the object like a big metallic acorn-shaped object. Another theory is a Nazi UFO program. The Bell. When an eyewitness discovers a glowing, bell-shaped object deep in the Kecksburg woods, the military's insistence that nothing was found at the crash site is put to further test. We have documentation that shows that when it's convenient, when they don't know what something is, they will often just say it's a meteor, just to make it go away, just to give something to the public. After ruling out the possibility the object was the downed Russian satellite, Cosmos 96, Residents look to a more radical explanation. It either had to have been some kind of highly secretive experimental craft of some sort, or it was something from somewhere else, some kind of extraterrestrial vehicle or probe or something. We began to accumulate a lot of information, which began to suggest that there was a lot more of the story. I say it was about as big as a Volkswagen, and then it had a thing around the back like a ring, and there was graphic writing on it. To some historians, the fallen object is eerily reminiscent to an alleged top-secret Nazi weapon. Some people say Hitler, in his pursuit for technology that the SS was heavily involved in, was developing by block the bell. Descriptions of it in Germany, it was an acorn-shaped object with this hieroglyphic or Cyrillic-type writing on it. The bell is a device that spins in opposite directions. It has red mercury in it, and when you compress and spin the red mercury, it glows, it defies gravity. The purpose of the bell was uh, an object that can really manipulate time and space. My understanding is, depending on what you read, is that it's some type of time machine. Why it was important was if you can manipulate time and space, your army can actually come up on another opposing force, and then you turn it off and they're standing right in front of you. It's a weapon, is what it was. The similarities between the alleged Nazi bell and the object in Kecksburg extend beyond size and shape. Now, one of the things that happened was that it gave off tremendous radiation. The radiation from the bell solidified the, the blood in humans, and it turned plants gray because it killed the chlorophyll. It was very dangerous. Back on that evening in 1965, some people saw or had direct contact with what appeared to be NASA personnel who were searching for something. There was some talk that maybe radiation was involved with whatever had fallen. If the object in the woods was the Nazi bell, how did it end up in Kecksburg 20 years after the war? There was something called Operation Paperclip. It was an effort by the United States to get German technology. And the Soviet Union did the exact same thing. So another theory for the Kecksburg crash is that either the United States or the Soviet Union got their hands on the technology for the Glock, the Bell. So what may have crashed in Kecksburg was either a US or Soviet program of the Bell technology that went wrong and crash landed in Pennsylvania. The Nazi bell is, again, it's one theory among many. There's no indication that I'm aware of that this was an actual working project. I still say that the most likely explanation is either some very secretive, very highly advanced space probe, or we still could be dealing with an extraterrestrial spacecraft. Bill Bullybush described also seeing these unusual markings on the, the back what he called the bumper area, actually, were these markings that he said were more like symbols than letters. 
Could the symbols be a message from an extraterrestrial civilization? It is certainly possible that somebody out there would be sending us a message with a probe. Earth has sent out a probe, and in the probe was a plaque. And on this plaque was a picture of a man and a woman to show what humans look like, and then a number of mathematical symbols. This was to show whoever recovered this that there were thinking people there who knew the number system and were attempting to communicate with whoever picked this probe up. So it's entirely possible that if somebody from outer space was wanting to send us a message, it would include some kind of symbols to let us know that there's people thinking out there and doing out there and not just sending things with nothing on it. What would be the point of that? If this was an alien spacecraft, of course, our government would be very interested in the learning of technology of what this thing was. I mean, we're dealing with the early days of the space program. And here, if this was an extraterrestrial spacecraft, we wanted to learn about their propulsion systems, the type of materials they have. So, of course, that would be one of the reasons why they wouldn't publicly want to talk about it. There were a lot of people in Kecksburg back when this happened. And they know what they saw that night, they know what they experienced, and these people were hopeful for answers. We began to file uh, Freedom of Information Act requests to many different agencies, to the FAA, uh, state police, military. I filed different uh, FOIA requests with NASA trying to get information on this, and no records ever surfaced. NASA wrote back and said, we have no records pertaining to your request. It seems highly unlikely that NASA would have nothing on Kecksburg because NASA's job during that time period was to deal with anything that fell from space. The other thing is that witnesses report having seen NASA officials on the scene. So for those two reasons, it's just impossible as far as I'm concerned that they would have absolutely no documentation, not even a newspaper article, about what happened in Kecksburg that day. Despite government stonewalling, Stan Gordon continues to search for answers. Over the years, I've interviewed hundreds of people who were involved in different aspects of this case. I would hear stories and I would follow up and find these people and talk to them. The Kecksburg case was unique because it involved the crash of an object. Something fell from the sky which we know was carted off in a truck which means that physical material still exists somewhere. It was our government that retrieved it. They must know something more about it. There was so little information really forthcoming on the event, and I really began to intensify my investigation in the 1980s. On December 9, 1965, near the village of Kecksburg, Westmoreland County, Pennsylvania. Stan Gordon produces a documentary about the Kecksburg incident to draw out new information. This documentary includes eyewitness testimony. And his determination pays off. In the summer of 1990, I was contacted by an individual, and he told me that he was a part of the security team that guarded the object that came in from Kecksburg when it arrived in the early morning hours of December 10th at Lockbourne Air Force Base outside of Columbus, Ohio. And he said they had the highest security when this flatbed tractor trailer with this tarped object came into the base. They were given a shoot to kill order to anybody that approached that area without the proper authorization. Then it continued on to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base near Dayton, Ohio, which was the headquarters for the Air Force Project Blue Book. Later that same year, building on this information, Stan Gordon's investigation turns up a new witness. I received a phone call from a fellow, his name was Myron. Myron went to the base. They were told, don't be looking around. He was trying to figure out what was going on. He got inside that building, and he saw something up on the scaffolding. Twenty-five years after a mysterious crash near Kecksburg, Pennsylvania, local residents remain in the dark as to what fell in the woods and where the object was taken. Forever impacted by the 1965 incident, Stan Gordon produces an investigative documentary about the Kecksburg incident to draw out witnesses. In 1990, a former truck driver from Ohio comes forward for the first time and agrees to tell Stan his story. 
Well, for the reason I never said anything before, because Uncle Sam said if if it word ever leaked out and they had to come and, and lock you up and throw the keys away or give you a bullet to satisfy you, no one will ever talk about it. He had worked for a large supply house in Ohio at the time. And within a few days after the incident at Kecksburg, a Navy officer came to their supply house and ordered a very large supply of a special type of glazed engineering brick to be sent to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. We found the base, and they took us to the old training center for World War II. They were told to stay with your truck, just unload the pounds, do your job, don't be looking around. They kept seeing these men going in and out of this building. So when he didn't see anybody around, he went and looked in the entrance of that building. I walked in the building and seen the great big parachute or something great down over the top with a light up underneath the parachute trying to cover this thing up so no one could see it. It was uh, sitting there on stilts. It had a bell shape there and they was working on it. The spaceship was like a, a large acorn runs about 14 feet to the top and about 10 to 12 feet wide at the bottom with a collar on it that has writing on the collar and you could see where they were trying to get into one of the openings I also seen an object land on the workbench and he said the lighting wasn't real good but on that workbench it was a white sheet covering it. so he couldn't see any detail but I have no doubt in my mind that the body laid on that table had three index finger and his skin looked like lizard. He said he was threatened and he was told that you're never to tell anybody about the story, we'll, we'll put you in jail and throw away the keys. He was told in 20 years this will all be public knowledge which of course that never happened. I'd be interested in going to a grand jury and tell them just what I've seen. They brought these special boxes toward the impact area. Is it possible that what Myron saw could be related to the boxes? The evidence seems quite overwhelming that something fell from the sky, that the military came in, they recovered the object, and to this day, they haven't told the public what it really was. I think definitely something came down in Kecksburg. As to what it was, we've eliminated everything except for some kind of American government secret object that they might have been testing or something extraterrestrial. Whatever it is, they're just keeping it to themselves, and uh, I will go to my grave without knowing anything about it. They just built there, they didn't take nothing out of there. But I seen it, I know it. They ain't tell me no different. The government owes the people of Kecksburg, in fact the whole country, an explanation for what really occurred that night in 1965. I believe that there are people that have either direct information on this case or have knowledge of the event, and it's very possible that there is physical evidence out there, mainly in the way of photographs, that still exist today. You're always hopeful that it's that next phone call that's going to give you that final information that's going to close the case forever.